The snake arm robot wriggling into impenetrable corners. And this is the only one of its kind you'll find anywhere in the world, designed and made here in the West Country. But like so much else that I found in high-tech business, making it is the easy bit. Okay, right, I've got to get round this pole. I will tell you about the exciting new business opportunities this thing affords in a minute, but I've just got to get round this pole. Hey, I did it. In a small industrial estate on the North Bristol fringe, I'm steering a robotic snake into a jungle of pipes. Oh, hang on, what's this? That's actually the Queen's Award vase that we got here, what, a year and a half ago or so, and I think those are roses. Rob Buckingham is rather proud of his vase. The Queen's Award for Innovation is recognition for nine years' work. And this is not just a game. The snake is designed to go where people cannot tread. This is taken from the nuclear world, where there are nasty spaces, radiation and all sorts of hazards, and you can't go inside. People can't go inside there. Let's assume this is um, lump of nasty stuff, like uh, some, some fuel or some, some plutonium, something like that. So don't touch it. I tell you what, Tim, this looks a bit tricky. You take that control <laughs> and I'll, um, I'll watch you do it. It's clever stuff and it's not cheap. You have to build a snake before you can sell it. And this one got started by private investors who just believed in it. I think it's exciting technology. And I think a group of guys here, 20, 20 guys in Bristol, have created world-beating technology. And if you think the initial investment from um, the people who, who went in on day one was less than half a million pounds, well, already it's earned this company over eight million pounds in sales. Hello, who's this? Back in our nuclear mock-up, the snake has found its target. You've got to be able to get in, get something out. Get a sample, and that could be a rigid sample, you know, so something flaky or something powdery or a liquid, in this case, something giraffe-like. The snakes could turn the nuclear cleanup industry upside down. Instead of burying huge vaults of mixed waste in concrete, places like Sellafield could use the robots to find the really toxic stuff. Then only this high-risk material would need extreme protection. But can the whole industry be turned on its head by 20 Bristol engineers? We've got disruptive technology, and that's the most difficult stuff to sell. So you're changing the way things people do things. You're allowing them to think new thoughts. We could, oh, we could take that nuclear reactor apart like this, or we could do something in a, in a pressure vessel in an upstream oil and gas plant that has never been done before, that was not thought possible. Hmm. The big question, will the nuclear industry buy it? And is this at full speed now? This is the man Rob has to convince. Sellafield's head of technology has come to Bristol for a demonstration. It's fascinating, fascinating piece of equipment. What it does is it allows us perhaps to get to places we couldn't reach without perhaps having to put a man in a suit to get in somewhere. So it potentially um, enables us to do things faster, more safely for our workforce, and actually um, manage the hazard for the country. It's taken 10 years to reach this point. It will be years more before the snakes are in action in Sellafield. Disruptive technology is rarely sold in a hurry. You're a giraffe. Dave Harvey, BBC Points West in Bristol.